Chasing Great Lakes trout and salmon can easily be done with a small craft and I'm going to show you how my boat is set up for it. What's going on everybody? My name is Brian. You're watching Angling Anarchy. I'm usually chasing muskies, but every now and again I do enjoy going over to Lake Michigan. It's only about an hour and a half away from me here in southern Wisconsin and taking advantage of the world-class salmon and trout fishing that we have available to us uh, because you'd be silly not to. Some really good fishing can be had near shore, but sometimes uh, it requires you to go offshore a little ways. I go out of Racine, Wisconsin a lot. The deeper water is a little bit further out there, so it does require me to go out sometimes three, five, seven, ten, eleven 10, 11 miles, uh, which in a 17 foot boat, which some people would consider a large boat uh, for inland lakes, this is a very small craft and you, you do have to be careful. I do recommend really watching the weather. Remember that thing I was talking about, about watching the weather and everything? We got weather. We gotta get out of here. There are some websites that I use to make sure I'm gonna be safe when I go out there, and I will link them in the description below just to check wave height, that sort of thing. Typically for me, if it's gonna be anything over a two to four foot wave day, I don't go out. Can you fish in it? Absolutely. Is it fun? Usually not. So a couple things to take into consideration if you're going to take a 16 to 18 foot craft out on Lake Michigan or any of the Great Lakes for that matter. I'm not really gonna go over the trolling equipment. That can be for another video. I just want to show you how I've got some of the stuff set up in my boat. I've had some people request that in uh, other videos. So I'm just gonna take a look at how I've got my rod holders set up, my downrigger set up, and then one piece of electronic equipment that I think is, I, I just, I don't like going on the water without it. And we're gonna take a look at that right now. All right, so the boat I'm fishing out of is a Crestliner Fishhawk 1750, a 2004 model. So uh, a couple things that I had to take care of initially were getting rod holders that I thought were sturdy enough to handle salmon fishing. I don't like using the plastic Scotty rod holders for this type of fishing. The amount of pressure that is put on a rod holder by trolling a dipsy diver or even a board with a lot of you know either copper or lead core line is immense and I just I feel like they're gonna snap so I, what I like to use are the tube style rod holders I'll show one of those uh, I like the tight lock rod holders and to do that I have to put these little square plates that's how the rod holders are held onto the side of the boat now newer boats are most likely going to have a sort of rail system along the gunnel. I don't have that. So I had to, you know, just, I just drilled and tapped into the aluminum, put them in place there, spaced them out how I thought they should be. I've got four on either side, and then I've got two downriggers. So I can fish up to 10 rods at once. I usually don't. I stick with like eight or nine. And typically that's fine because in Wisconsin, I can only run three rods a person. I usually only have two or three people out on the boat when I'm trolling. So that's perfectly fine. You start getting over eight or nine rods in a small craft like this. Can it be done? Yes. Can it get really messy? Absolutely. And I've had that happen. So uh, yes, those, those tight lock rod holders, the tube style aluminum rod holders are one thing that I would absolutely recommend that you should have if you're going to try and tackle Great Lakes salmon and trout trolling. The next important piece of equipment I like to use out there are downriggers. It lets you control your depth a lot better than just clipping on weights and sending them out back. And I guess I should say that I typically use the downriggers, dipsy divers, and then rods with lead core. Uh, I'm not gonna go into all that stuff. There's other videos that you can watch that will tell you about that. I just wanna show how my boat is set up for getting out on these big water adventures. So here we go. Um, Again, I don't have a rail system where I can add a downrigger. The base for the downrigger was quite a bit wider than the gunnel. If I put it on here, it was going to screw up the way my cover fit. So I had to come up with a different way to do it. And what I did was, if we go back in the back corner here, this piece of quarter inch angled aluminum, wow, that was hard, aluminum, is where I set 
this board. And I'll film this a little bit better so you can see what's going on. But this board actually runs across the back of the boat. From there to there. The only thing I screwed up is it's very close to my motor. So I have to be careful when this board is in place between those two pieces of angled aluminum that I don't tilt this up too high. It's not a problem because most of the uh, marinas that you launch out of, there's plenty of depth. I don't have to trim the motor up a lot. Uh, it's just something to consider that I obviously did not when I built this, but everything works out fine. So what happens here is the base for the downriggers are at either end of the board. I have put some lights on the board to help with either really early morning or late night trolling and being able to net the fish behind the boat. But that is what I was able to do uh, with my boat. And I'll, I'll show a little bit better detail how this board fits onto these two pieces of aluminum on either side. All right, so basically what we have here is a two by eight piece of lumber that I just stained and put a coat of varnish on so it looks halfway decent, waterproofs it. But what I did is it sets on this angled aluminum. There are two holes in the aluminum that these eye bolts go down through, hold it in place. You can see there's a little leg here because the downrigger is gonna pull down, kind of want to torque it down. So this on either side keeps it from doing that. As an extra bit of precaution, it's probably a bit much, but I can also run that U-bolt over the cleat and bolt it on and hold it on that way as well. So uh, this thing ain't going anywhere and it works out really nice, does a good job. As I said, if you've got rail systems and you can buy the piece that you know, this base for a Canon downrigger would sit on, I would recommend doing that. But if you have an older boat and you need to come up with something, running that board from side to side, giving it a little bit of strength so that the downriggers can't pull it down uh, with those little legs back there, I think that's the best way to do it. And it works pretty good and has for quite a few years now. All right, so here's what it looks like with the downrigger on here. I've got the Canon with the six foot extendable arm. I honestly can't remember which model it is, but it's Canon hand crank downrigger. Does a really nice job. Uh, I've had really good luck with these. Now, the one thing that I do want to talk about, uh, the little piece of electronic equipment that I alluded to in the first part of this video is called a depth rater. And what that does is there's a cord that plugs into this. And this is attached to this little spring down here that the coated wire of the downrigger runs through. The wire is coated so that the signal from this little probe here can be sent up the wire. It's picked up in that little spring apparatus there. It's a radio wave actually, I believe. Picks it up, sends it through this wire up to the dash and there's a little readout and I'm going to show you what that readout is. So the readout on the depth rater is showing us two things. It's showing us speed and temp. Where? Down at the ball. Wherever it is in the water column, it's giving us the speed with this little pad wheel and it's, there's a temp sensor so it's giving us the temp. This is one of the most important pieces of equipment on the boat that I have to use for Lake Michigan fishing because it shows you where that cold water is. The key to salmon and trout fishing, I think anyway, is especially in the summertime, finding that cold water and getting your baits down to just above or right in uh, that area where you're, you're looking at about 52 degree water temp. And not only is that temperature important, but your speed as well, because there are currents that will develop on the Great Lakes that up on the surface you will not know about. Your GPS might be telling you that you're going forward at 2.7 miles per hour, but your baits might be going significantly slower because they are either going along with or against a current. So you might be trying to pull baits that are speed sensitive 
through areas of water that are either making them go slower than you think or faster than you think. This piece of equipment, this depth rater is, like I said, one of the most important things that I have on the boat that I would not want to be without when I go out on Lake Michigan. There are other units, I believe there's one called a fish hawk, uh, but there are other probes that go on the just above the ball on the downrigger and will send that signal up to a unit so you can tell what your speed and temp is. I can't stress how important I feel that is. Do you have to have it? No. Does it make life a lot easier when you're out there? Yes, because you can be out there thinking you're 50 feet down in nice cool water and I've been out there where 50 feet down is still 70 degrees just like the surface. So being able to find that cold water is so so important that I think these are a must-have if you're going to do any amount of trolling for salmon and, and trout on the Great Lakes. All right I, there are so many things that we could talk about with Great Lakes fishing. I've just had people ask me how I have my boat set up to do this to the best of my abilities, I have just shown you. Uh, again, haven't talked about trolling equipment um, or the baits that you use or any of that stuff. That can be for other videos, but I just wanted to show you the rod holders, the downriggers, and that wonderful little piece of equipment called a depth rater that makes all the difference in the world, I think, when you go out to chase fish on big water like the Great Lakes. All right, thanks guys so much for watching. If you have questions about anything, please leave them in the comments below and uh, I'll see you on the next video.